Our five-year-old Frigidaire microwave, model FGMV 176 NTF, is dead. The fuse is blown, so I'm gonna change it. Changing the fuse may only be a temporary repair, and sometimes means there's a bigger issue, so stick around to the end if you'd like to know when it's happening, why I think it's happening, and how to prevent it. Changing the fuse is inexpensive and pretty straightforward. However, it would be irresponsible if I didn't touch upon safety. Microwave ovens have high voltage capacitors. That can take a long time to discharge, even if the microwave is left unplugged for weeks. There are warning labels for a reason. Touching the wrong thing can result in serious injury and possibly kill you. Have I scared you? If so, good. Know your limitations and know that performing any repairs on a microwave is dangerous. Basically, proceed at your own risk. We have a switched outlet, so I turn off the switch, but most importantly, I make sure to unplug the microwave. If I didn't have access to the plug, I'd turn off power at the breaker. The blown fuse is behind the top of the display, but to get at it, I need to remove some screws. Before removing any screws, it's important to open the door. You know how a microwave stops when you open the door? That's why. And don't forget that high voltage capacitor still has a wicked charge. So I start by removing these three Phillips head screws. And if you're wondering why I do these videos in close to real time, it's so I can follow along again later, in case it happens again. That's one. Two. And three. They're all the same screw. Then I remove the top cover by gently pushing down on the top and pulling it forward. To remove the display cover, I need to remove a screw located above the panel. It's a little hard to get to, so a long Phillips screwdriver is required. To avoid dropping the screw, I need to magnetize the screwdriver, which is as easy as rubbing a magnet on the tip of the screwdriver. Now to remove the screw. This reminds me of that game operation. I was so bad at that. I'd shake and the guy's red nose would light up and ugh, that buzzer, such a stressful game. <laughs> kind of like going inside a microwave. The front panel is removed by pushing it up and it can be a little stiff if it's never been opened, but I changed the fuse a year ago, so it should be easy. I gently lean it forward to avoid stressing any wires and now to remove the cage. Remove this screw with my other magnetic screwdriver and the cage comes out. Wow, that fuse is really blown. It broke in half, so it's gonna be tougher than usual to get out. Normally I'd just put a screwdriver under it and pop it up, but I'll have to push it out of the context and then use needle nose pliers to lift the pieces out. Wow, look at that. That's a major blow. These are the new line fuses, which are model 530-450-9451. And the fuse I took out was a genuine Frigidaire OEM part, which was pretty expensive. So I got these on Amazon and they're the same specs. I don't want to leave any glass shards in there, so I'm going to use my little shop vac to clean them up. Insert the fuse by putting it above the contacts and pushing down. And now to close everything up. Put the cage back on. Replace the screw. And before I put the display back in, I wanna have a look at the door switches and the wires connected to them. My guess is one of the switches could be faulty and causing the fuse to blow. So I'm gonna check for any melted or burned wires. I don't see anything or smell anything. So one of the switches is probably a bit temperamental. To reattach the display, the hooks need to go into the frame. So you line up the hooks a little bit high and then apply a little downward pressure. 
Now to put back that tricky screw. Using my magnetized screwdriver, I put it back in. And now to adjust the camera. Replace the top cover by putting in the top first and applying gentle pressure to snap it in at the bottom. And now to replace the three screws. Now to plug it back in and restore power. I'll set the time. The LED display looks weird because the LEDs are blinking faster than the camera's 30 frames per second shutter speed, but there are no issues. Check the display functions. I'm also going to reset the filter display since I recently changed the carbon filter. Looks good. I think I'll make a little matcha green tea to test this thing out, but only a little. I <laughs> had a lot of caffeine today. What is that dripping in the background? <laughs> Maybe I'll fix that dripping faucet in the background next. Looks good. And if you hate the beep of this microwave as much as I do, just turn it off. I wish this thing had a mute button instead of having to wait for the display to scroll to off. I may have overheated the matcha. Huh. Before I go fix that drippy sink, let me explain how and when the fuse seems to blow. It happens when the microwave is heating and the door is yanked open without pressing the stop button first. The microwave is designed so that when the door is open, the microwave turns off. That way you're not being exposed to microwaves. If the microwave is running and the stop button isn't pressed, pulling the door open in any manner that isn't perfectly straight can cause a fickle switch to short and blow the fuse. I think that's what's happening here. And that's why the manufacturer says to always press the stop button before opening the door. I also recommend that instead of yanking the door open, use your thumb on the display to create opposing force. That way the door opens straight. If you found this information helpful, please do me a favor and hit that like button as if it opened the microwave door without hitting the stop button first and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.